I mean, I hate doing that because if it's far. Yeah, I mean, I would never want to do that. <laughs> See, I'm not one of those people that would just have you run all the way for a nice coffee. In fairness, uh, you didn't know it was far. Okay. I, I didn't. I didn't either. I, 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 I did feel like I was starting to be the starting to be kind of a dick though, and it was like, oh. like, oh, it's kind of far. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> uh, I know bad. what I want. Well, I know what you generally don't want, and that's to be dominated heading into a flop, as Daniel is with queen yeah. six against queen ten, both players with gut shot straight draws. Really interesting flop here, Lee. Daniel Negreanu with the straight draw and the backdoor flush draw. Doug Polk with the gut shot to the nuts. Oh, and in <laughs> comes the seven of hearts, the best card in the deck for Daniel, who has a redraw to a queen high flush, and it gives Polk a two-way straight draw now. Whoa! We see Daniel continue oh. to check back. And disaster on this occasion as the jack slides in on the river, giving Polk the pure nuts. And of course, Negron is going to bet into this 5K. Oh, my goodness, Ali. He can't possibly check back this, can he? No, there's no way. Daniel Negron is just thinking... What amount am I going to bet here? It's a 5K pot. I checked back the turn. 1,000. 1, Obviously, he knows any 10 has him beat, let alone queen 10. Going with 20% pot. But when we kind of fling that one yellow chip out there, do we not get concerned that the opposition might be tempted to represent and check raise us off of our holding? In general, that wouldn't be something that I'm too concerned about. I do think that Negranio could have sized up a little bit more here, especially because he's so under-repped having checked back the turn. Sure. 8,500. And the check raise is a big one. Yeah, it's a little bit more than pot. So I bet that, figuring you're going to do that, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Hang on. Walk that. Oh boy, Doug's just praying. Daniel's got a 10 here. Oh, wait a minute. Well, maybe you have the same hand. No, you would never raise with that. Never mind. So it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 7,500 more. Seems like a spawn. Daniel needs to be right here about 35% of the time to make it a profitable call. Hulk, stony face, trying not to give anything away. Doesn't seem like Daniel's paying too much attention to his body language. How much is that? 70? 85. 85. Is there, though, a chance? Oh, he oh, does make the call, Ali. Oh, the queen, too. That was hard to have. Wow. I could have lost a lot more money on this hand. There's six? I had better than the six. You had ten? I had, well, not exactly, but I had well, better than the six. What do you have? I had better than the six. I had better, better than the six and the ten. I play high stakes for, <laughs> for I guess, I don't know, whatever. Sort of. Maybe each of them should have to wear a glove. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. And That's then if you nice want to move all in, you simply <laughs> pound the rail with the glove. At least somebody believes me. With the way that this match has been going, I don't think we're going to see too many all-ins. That's Lee. true. He's been playing a little more on the passive side. I mean, what's the most that either player has been up so far, is somebody... 31 and change, I think, for Daniel is what I recall being the high water mark for us. So not player. even a buy-in. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Three Negronio, bad situation. Yeah, Negranio did mention that part of the reason he accepted this match is too big of a Rocky fan. His dogs are named Rocky and Apollo. That's true. Yeah. You think he loves Rocky more than Apollo? <laughs> they are watching.
watching at home with Amanda Leatherman, his wife. And look at this. We have a four bet from Kid Poker. 9,600 total, but we've also got a lot of hand for Doug Polk here in this ace queen. Now Is it five bettable? Behind. I'm really bad with chips. Mm -hmm. Well, there's 20. So at 100 40. big blinds deep, okay. yes. Okay, cool. But Thanks. these players are a little bit deeper than 100, and that does play in here. What also might play in is Doug Polk thinking that Negranu is on the tighter side, and that's why we're seeing him just make the call instead of go all in. Now, certainly, Daniel would have preferred to fold right then and there. The fact that Doug has called does tip his hand somewhat. Now both players flopping gut shot straight draws on the Jack-10 tray board. Doug, quick check over to Daniel with 19-2 in the middle. And he slides 4,000 out there. Call. Doug calls the 4K. Six on the turn. And you think Daniel's starting to piece together some of that Ace king, ace queen for Doug. I don't think he's putting ace king in Doug's range. I think we he see the five bet there. Yeah, okay. I think he, we would have expected an all-in preflop. He also blocks the king, of course. So we start to consider ace queen as a very real possibility in this spot. It is a little bit of a scary board for Daniel because I imagine that Polk would play pocket jacks and pocket tens this way as well. Wow, and you see Polk again making the call. This could be the biggest pot we've seen thus far and a very dry run out. Does Kid Polker have a final bullet in him? And is it a given that that bullet gets it done? Might depend on the caliber. I'm all in. Wow. <sighs> that is not what Doug wanted to hear. It's 31. And well Old done, Daniel Negranu. Oh, no. <laughs> Negranu <laughs> takes it down. Old man speeding. And, and confesses <laughs> immediately. Check. K M N can deuce against Ace Four. A Helmuthian dark check out of Doug there, who picks up the wheel draw up against Kings and Deuces. <coughs> Doug check calls four hundred and checks again. Twenty one hundred. Daniel with a rare turn barrel. Call. Doug calls again, now hits a four. Yeah, that's a standard turn peel by Doug, but with how seldom Daniel's been betting the turn, I almost want to let it go. But you wonder whether or not the turn barrel skews more toward the side of he's light right. versus the side of he's strong. At least in Doug's mind. And Daniel taking far longer on the river here to come up with his number. 5,100. You wonder how that pause is going to be perceived by Doug, who has improved from ace high to a pair of fours. And this may come down to whether or not Doug thinks Daniel has a king. And if he doesn't, then Doug's hand should be good. Oh, boy. Whoa. Wow, nice. 19,200. Look at this, Ali. We're repping the ace five and the five six. Might this be a little frustration out of Polk? Sure. 19-2. Does he ever do this with 3-4? Four? 
I don't think so, no. This is a tough spot for Daniel. Sure. The ace five is very real in my mind here in this spot, don't you think? Yeah. Not a hand that's going to three bet necessarily. Yeah, oh, wow. Daniel Negreanu takes another huge one off of Doug Polk. Because you never know, it could be this hand. It's different than like when you, like if you watch a poker tournament that has a one hour slot. You know it's And there's be. six people left. You're like, oh, well, this is it. He's going to lose this hand or whatever. Someone gets tens, you're like, okay. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> someone's going to have ace king and someone's going to go down, yeah. And you can tell who won the hand based on who had more chips. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't actually ever think about that. That's the problem. It's like, you know this is the last hand, and then this guy has a two to one chip advantage. Well, he won. So what's the point of watching the hand out? Yeah, it's like the 56 Four minute dollar. mark. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Big pot brewing here, Ali, where yeah. Daniel Negreanu three bet the suited connectors. He's known for loving these hands in his poker career. Oh, well, he's not alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Polk. That's the pocket tens, and there's the continuation bet. And with the two paint over cards to the two tens, obviously Doug is going to have some concern. Yeah, but against Daniel's sizes, he bet 1,600 into 8,000. It's just going to be a no-brainer appeal for Doug on the flop. Now, the ace on the turn is an interesting card. Obviously, any one of those three overs could be in Daniel's range here as a three-better. But Doug blocks 10 jack with the two tens and could potentially try to represent Broadway at some stage in this hand. Goes check, check. Now on the river, Daniel knows six high is never winning. What's he going to do? Step away from 11,200 and wave the white flag? Certainly doesn't look that way. What's really interesting here, Ali, is the last time that Negreanu did that, and he put his chips together and kind of shuffled them, he was contemplating a bet, and he ended up check-folding. I wonder whether or not Doug Polk will pick up on that. I don't believe that hand got to showdown, so I'm not sure whether or not Doug... But the fact that Daniel ended up checking and then right. folding his hand meant that he didn't have a very strong holding. And also, Daniel's been fairly content to take middling sort of hands like a queen or a king on this sort of board and just check them down. Yeah, but Daniel has also taken this line time and time again with his bluffs, right? He's doing this thing where he bets the flop, checks back the turn, and then fires the river when he can't win, and it works out for him. <laughs> I don't like that. He didn't like that face. I don't huh? like that. He didn't like the sneaky old man I face. I don't like that. That's like your new meme now. Yeah, I think so. God, I, I hope there's no tweets when we move over to the online p part of the session where you're like, great session today. It was speeding all night. <laughs> <laughs> old man speeding. <laughs> that would not be good. 900. I want a tipsy elf's onesie with an old man speeding oh, motif on it to wear this Christmas. <laughs> Granu continuing to speed a little bit here with the 10-6 uh, of clubs, mixing in the three bet. Yeah, his uh, accelerator pedal has been far more depressed through this latter 25% of hands than at any other point in the match as it comes 6-6 six, six king. The timing could not be better for him. Smashing trips, unfortunately. Doug doesn't have a whole lot of anything other than backdoor straight potential. Yeah, but Doug, I imagine, is not going to let this one go for that size. No, it's the pricing that keeps him engaged. And it's been consistent. Three bet and then bet 1,600 for Daniel. No added equity. Drug. Doug drawing dead. Daniel checks the turn. Also standard. I mean, one of these times, Doug has just got to figure when he looks up at this texture that he can fire and take this thing. I think it's going to be this time, Elise, carving out chips. 7,600. 
7,600. Normal sizing in relation to the pot. And Negranu just trying to figure out how he can extract the maximum from Doug from this point forward. No concerns about any flushes. Call. Doug is totally unimproved on the river. A very clean river at that. Negranu checks again. Boy, just so tough to walk away from the investment if you're Doug with a river like that. All in. All in. Oh. How much is it? Ooh. You don't want to hear how much is it. Should be quite a finish we could have here. I mean, this never hits the mark. So you could have six, seven, five, six. No, I can't imagine a fold. Forty-three, nine, seven, five. Forty-three plus. Doug Polk putting Daniel plus. Kid Poker Negrani into the ultimate can. test. Just but Negrani has trips. Very small chance. I, no, actually, there's almost no chance I fold. But I'm just making sure when I'm doing the right thing. So what the hell did he bet on the third? Seven, six, fifteen thousand, fifteen thousand, eighteen thousand. 26,000, and the bet is 43,975. 43, oh. <sighs> Nothing. Young this. man speeding. Wow. Huge pot for kid poker. You All think right. you think is celebrating back. right now? <laughs> it's funny because you're the one that was saying that. Yeah. Most definitely. 